very few people in the Nigerian movie industry get the privilege of being called box office queen. And one of them is here with me today because she has proven time and time again that she has cracked the code to you know, make money from her talent and her art and her craft. Um, Tony Abraham is here with me today, Thank actor, you. producer. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Ibuka. Thank uh, you. So. Thanks for coming back because you've been here before yes, a couple of yes, years ago. Yes, I <laughs> we'll get to that yes, a little later. I'm but, actually uh, <laughs> ready for it because I know you're going to go there. Yes. <laughs> but how are you doing? I mean, you've evolved brilliantly. You know, you were Tony the actor. You've now become a business on your own, producing movies back to back. I know you have one coming up very soon, but how has that transition happened? And we see that a lot more, I believe, with women in the industry these days, much more than men. I might be wrong, but it seems to happen a lot with women. What's spurring that? And why are you guys so successful at doing this thing, you think? Um, I, can, I can't speak for all of us, but I can speak for myself. Yeah. You know? I'm just, um, I'm, I'm a go-getter. Yeah. And, you know, I, apart from the fact that, okay, yes, money. I started making money in the entertainment, I don't think, let's say five years, when I started working with Film One. That's, that was when I started making, I, I can't even remember my first movie. When Mr. M uh, Moses called me and said, they've paid your money to my, your account. Big Sam called me and I saw my account, <laughs> you know, and that was the first time. I saw 40 something million. I'm not joking. I had, I could not, I could not sleep. So I would just sit down, I would see somebody, I, I now called my godmother. I said, come, it's like these film people, they, they will come and film one people, they will come and keep me and collect it from me. It's like ham rubber is following me, you know. And the money is like, not is actually cash. <laughs> you know, because that's like the first time. Yes. You know, am I, you know, that was the first time making such money and it's my money. So I feel like, ah, why would they say it to my account? So I had to go to my godmother's house. So what am I trying to say? I started making money like five years ago. But I am a go-getter. I, I love this job. It's passion for me, and I want to do more. Yeah. Do you understand? I really want to do more and more and more and more. So, so now you're saying you didn't go in. I mean, making, you got, getting that alert was obviously great. But you're saying you started producing not because of the money, but the passion. Yes. I have passion for acting. Yeah, obviously, obviously, you know, there are sometimes they pay us. But it's then, when I was in the Yoruba industry, yes. it's peanuts. They don't pay us well. So, but because I love it, you know, so you just keep praying that, ah, Yoruba will say, oh, my dad, oh, my dad, that means it's going to be good. So you just keep pushing. And it's because of the passion I have for it, because I love it. Yeah. So there was no money. Yes, but money to still eat everything, you still have that, you know. But not and this you know, kind of heavy alert. Ah, uh, no, not, <laughs> uh, no, not anymore. Like, I can confidently tell you that, ah. Uh, no, I'm one of the richest actresses. I'm Young not girl. just in. I'm not just in noise. Maker. I mean, we can see it because you are constantly working, and like I said, you have a yes. movie coming up, which we'll talk about it later. But I want to mention, you know, you talked about the Yoruba industry now, and are you still a part of the Yoruba movie industry? Are you actively there? Because we'll, we always hear all of these stories uh, about all these camps, you know, in that industry, which seems to make things harder to work there. Is that why you left? Or was it because of the money? You were not making enough money? Or what, what, what's going on there, if you know? Um, you know, I left. I didn't leave. That's like my source. Yeah. That's like my roots. That's, like where, I, that's where I started from. They would say, that's like my parents, you know. But, you know, Yoruba would say, Tomo de bato loko, one man for loko. Means when you get to a level, when a child is grown up, to be on his or her own, you have to let them go. Yeah. Do you understand? So that's how your buying industry is. So, but what happened then wasn't about money. It was just about, you know, something happened with my ex. And you know, women, we are always very emotional. You just want everybody to fight that particular person. And since everybody is not fighting that particular person, you know, then, but that was then because I was young, you know, you just feel like, oh, everybody's against you. So I just wanted to be on my own. I felt the world, my world was crumbling, you know. So, and that was just it until I met Big Sam. Yeah. And we started working, you know, together. I started getting roles. So the first man movie I did was with um, Auntie Omonio Boli. So, and people saw my acting. So from there, 
Yeah. And I did mine. Yeah. Came out well. I mean, the last time you were here, like I mentioned, we had a moment which, I mean, <laughs> I feel like the whole country kept talking about where you got emotional, yes. you know, at some point. And you mentioned your ex there, which was part of the reason why, yes. you know, you got emotional at the time. How far have you moved past that now? Uh, uh, um, I know you have, you're married, <laughs> you have kids now, you know, did that define how you moved forward in any way uh, with your personal life? <clears throat> It was a lot of work, you know, it was a lot of work, prayer. I just, you know, I just said to myself, too, you need to move on. Yeah. You need, this is not, it will happen. This is not the way God wants it. So, you know, I keep praying, working hard. And, and I'm not going to lie to you. Um, <laughs> if it's not the best thing, I'm sure it's, I'm sure he is. My husband is the best thing that's ever How did you happened meet? to me. He's an actor. He has been in the Yoruba industry, so I know him. And You've there's always known him. Yes, well. for years. He's my senior colleague. So I'm always like, he's too calm. Like, ah, he's always very calm. But when you see him in movies, he's always like, ah, I feel like I'm bad, but, you know. <laughs> but in real life, he's a, my husband is a prayer warrior. So, you know, whenever I go to Abel Kuta, he's my friend. So we started getting close and close, you know, and that was just it. So we started dating. I didn't even want anybody to know. I didn't want anybody to know about it. So he started dating. So I just realized I was getting so fond of him. So when he wants to go to work, I would just tell him, I want to come. So I'll follow him. So I'll be in the, in the room. So some other time I'll tell him, I want to sit there. I don't mind what anybody will say. So from there, I took him to my parents. Open. Yes, yeah. he took me to his parents. And we had a little introduction. So I got pregnant yeah. and we got married. Considering how your past relationships went with someone in the industry. Did it worry that you were getting involved with someone again in the industry? <laughs> yeah, um, yes and no. When I'm actually in love or when I know something is right, but my family, they were a little bit skeptical. It was just my, yes, it was my godmother that said, don't worry, he's a good man, go ahead. So, but later, and you know, he's just, I'm from a Christian home. So when they prayed about it, they said, this is your husband. And, Fortunately, my ex, my family actually prayed about it and they said it wasn't, but I was just stubborn. Yeah. And I said, okay, and I was say. But they said, you have to be submissive. I'm like, of course, I have to, and I will be submissive, so. So you, you obviously learned lessons from the, oh, from of the course, first episode. Oh, of course, yeah. of course, I'm more matured. There are some things now I can't do. There are some things, you know, then you just want to get angry at every little things. But now I'm so matured. Yeah. We have two kids. You know, we have a boy and a girl. So. How do you draw the line between, you know, work with him and being married to him? Does it ever cross? And, you know, there are people who always say, oh, I mean, you can't really do business with someone you're in love with. When emotions get involved with money, you know, <laughs> it's quite dicey. How do you handle that? Okay, yes. <clears throat> that was um, part of the things we spoke about. My husband said, okay, now... I know, you know, my husband is a matured man. So he's like, Tony, there are some things I want us to talk about. When we're in the house, yes, wife. But when it comes to your job, you're an actress, which I've accepted. So for instance, me and my husband, we don't do, we don't work together. Is that something you want to yes, continue to Yes, and happen? that forever. So, but he's a great actor. Wouldn't you want he to work is, with no, him? He has, no, I can work in his movie, but producing together, no. Okay, okay. He has his YouTube channel. I have my YouTube channel. I promote his job. He promotes mine. Yeah. So anytime he wants me to act in his movie, he will just tell me, hello, uh, you're going to be working with me for two days. I'm like, ah, how much are you paying? So we'll laugh over it. Obviously, he's not going to, I'll go. So, but putting money together. together. No. That's where it gets done. But dicey. for like sometimes when I want to shoot, okay, when I was filming Ijakuma, because I did it with film one. So I didn't have enough money because I it's a big budget. And that's like my biggest budget ever. So I had to, I spoke to him that, babe, can you borrow me? Ah, on one condition, okay, you know, normally. So sometimes you can just say, okay, take, add it. When the movie comes, I'll give me back my money. But like doing business together, movie business, ah, no, we don't. <laughs> He has his businesses and I have mine. Yeah. I mean, like I said, you've evolved brilliantly, you know, and you're, you're now producing. You've produced how many movies now? Um, <clears throat> from your by industry or in the cinema? In the cinema. This is going to be my fourth, fifth. Your, your, your fifth? In the cinema, In yes. cinema. I mean, that's brilliant. <clears throat> Thank you. Not many people can boast of doing one, you know. What's, how have you been able to, because I mean, like, producing is hard work. Very hard. 
you've gone from acting, which most people say is like an entryway into you know the business. Directing is even tough on its own, which you also do. Yes. But producing is a whole monster on its yes. own. You know, what's the mentality behind how you work, especially for cinema movies, which are supposed to be like box office, blockbuster, big budget movies? Um, how do you handle that? The pressure? It's a lot. <clears throat> it's a lot. But you know, I'm, I have relationship with a lot of people, so I know it's stressful, but. I get stressed a little bit, but as a producer, I get most things easily because I have good relationship with people. And like I, I told one of my friends, his name is Shell, I said, now from this very movie, I'm not gonna be playing lead in my job anymore. That I want to face production, produce. Obviously I'll do few things. I'll use unknown face. Do you understand? So generally production, producing is not it's not easy, but I love it. I enjoy it. I like the fact that everybody has to be somewhere for like two months, three months. I have to be the one to cater for them. Everybody has to come to me for something. <laughs> you know, I enjoy it. Yeah. I like it. And I know and how the money to is good. <laughs> yes, when you are spending you the money, see. it's stressful. But when you now when want you to go to the, the cinema, money. but it's a lot of work because you have to go around, you have to keep selling, yeah. you have to keep talking about it. That's Let's quickly talk about it, Giacomo, now. I mean, what's, give us a bit, I mean, without giving it away too much, what's this story about and why should we be bothered about going to see it? Before I go on, <coughs> I actually have another movie I was supposed to shoot. So we're supposed to start, we, we actually went for Reiki in Oshogbo. Everybody knows about this. Yeah. We went for Reiki in Oshogbo. So we're supposed to start the following week. I slept and I saw it, Giacomo, shoot fully. And I opened my eyes, did the voice note. And I went to all the groups. I said, this job canceled. Because the movie I was supposed to do before was something that has to do with Oshun Shogbo. So every, Mr. Moses called me, Mimi called me, Ladun. Everybody was calling me that. Ah, ah, are you OK that we've been planning? You people have done. We know how much you spend for it. I said, no. This. So fortunately, my crew, I just sent them there. Tunji is my friend, he's a production designer, Tunji Afolayan, one of the biggest production. So I said, Tony, where did you get the story? So when I called Kendi Joseph, I was like, wow, this is one of the best stories I've ever had in my life. And Kendi Joseph is like the biggest scriptwriter. So everybody liked the story because I actually saw it in my dream. It's about a pastor that has a big church and um, find out that one of his... <laughs> Church member who happens to be a choir mistress is a stripper, but not really a stripper, but a stripper. Yeah, now wow. <laughs> I don't want to explain because there are so many yes. things. And he Sounds started. Sounds interesting already. Yes, in, and he grew up in Abel Kuta. You know, he grew up from Abel, from Abel Kuta. So I grew up from Abel Kuta too. I had tribal mark. You know, so many things. I don't, I don't <laughs> want to give it away. It, yeah, but it's premiering next weekend, I believe? It's going to premiere. When is it coming on, out in cinemas? It's going to premiere on Sunday at IMAX. Okay. Then it's going to be in all cinemas, 23rd. But I think we're going to start advanced screening on the 22. That's Thursday. Okay, so that is perfect for Christmas. Take your family. Is it yes. a family movie? Is it um, something? I'm not going to lie about it. It's actually rated. <laughs> okay. It's okay. rated. And I don't, I don't mind. Yeah. Because for me to be able to tell you what the story, for me to be able to teach people, I think it has to be rated, and which is rated, which is fine by me. So All at right. least youths, parents, they can see the movie yeah. and learn from it. It's okay. a wonderful movie. We'll be looking forward to that. But before you, you go now, there's something that happened on social media some time ago about some lady who said you were holding, she was, you were holding her baby or something about a, what was that drama about and how did you, focus? something about a prank. So that kids on social media of holding a baby in her belly for you. No, or you know, don't you know this? <laughs> you know this. You know we actually. I think my team actually called her, and when they called her, they they recorded her and they played it. She was just saying, "Ah, mommy, ready to Mommy, ready I think she just wanted to trend, you know. So he said, "Ah, I should leave her husband or call her that yes, she's been my that husband, you her husband uh, or that she's been pregnant for four years, you know." So they wanted to sue. I said they should leave her. She sent me a DM. I said, don't do that again. It's not nice. I know it's a prank. But, but did, you know, so did you take it personal initially? Oh, no, I did not. Why? Why now? Nah. Okay. Now, finally, now, elections are around the corner. And a lot of actresses and actors are coming out and declaring their support for, you know, who they are going to be campaigning for or voting for and all of that. A lot of your colleagues have done that. You have a colleague of yours who's running mates for governor here in Lagos, you know, 
Are you engaged politically? Are you willing to speak about who you're going to be voting? What are your thoughts on the elections coming? Um, I think um, my Tom is yeah. going to speak at the polling center. Okay. You're not going to publicly support any candidates? Why? I don't think so. I, I know I have influence on people. If I put out, if I tell you, okay, this is who I'm going to vote for, I know a lot of people would do it, would vote for that same person. I know I influence people, but I don't want such to happen again. I want everybody to decide on their own. I want everybody to have a mind of their own. So I don't want to influence anybody. Why not? I just don't want to. Because right now, sometimes you really cannot tell what's going to happen. So I, don't, I want everybody to have a mind of their own so that we will not end up always putting the blame on anybody. So fine, I'm going to vote for whoever I'm voting for. So if anything happens, I won't say it was Ebuka that said, it was in Ebuka that posted it on his page that we should vote for this person. No, I know that it's my Fair choice enough. because I know I have influence on a lot of youth, but I don't want to use my influence in that way. Yeah. So let everybody decide whoever they want to vote for. But my own term is going to speak for me at the poly units. Fair enough. I mean, you're a mother now. You have yes. two kids? Yes. Happily married. I mean, there, there's something they call on social media, womb watchers. People are always trying to monitor, uh, is she pregnant, is she not pregnant? You know, I know you've talked a lot about, you know, your journey with childbirth and having children and, you know, all the struggles around that. You know, how has that been for you and how do you handle it online socially? Uh, it's not easy. You know, most times they just want you to, 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 they always want you to have a child, you know. Obviously, yes, I have a stepdaughter and I have a son. So they just, oh, when are you going to give birth? When are you going to? So it's just, it's not always easy, but it's just when, when the time is right, the pregnancy will stay. Are you having more kids? Yes. You plan to? Yes, I was actually pregnant, but I lost it, so it's fine. Recently? Yes. Did you, I mean, did that's what I was trying to get to, but I didn't want to be insensitive I about know. it. Because, you know, you have all these people who comment and they, sometimes they're not very complimentary about it, you know. How did you handle that situation? It was, you know, most times they don't even know what we're going through. You know, then I just had such thing, I cried because I just wanted to have one more, two more kids and I'm done. So things happened, I'm so bloated. So everybody would just keep on, you are too fat. Look at your husband, your husband is young. You are just, look at you, you are fat, look at your... But they don't understand. Yeah. So you know, when they say all these things, but Ibuka, guess what? I'm used to it. As an actress, you just have to, or else you will just die of depression. So once I see it, and if I'm not okay with your comments and you keep going, I'll just block the person. I don't have time for negativity. So. Well, fair enough. Well, good luck with everything. Thank you. Um, both your personal life, your work, you are smashing it you. <laughs> with your work. And we're looking forward to Ijakumo, which is premiering. And you're going to come for my premiere <laughs> on the 18th. She said she was going to do that to me. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> publicly. <laughs> Ebuka, will, you have to... Eh? I will try my best. No, say you, I will come. <laughs> <laughs> you want the whole country to drag me? No, okay, I will come. Uh -huh. Sunday, thank you. Thank you very much, to you, Thank you so much, today. And Thank you for joining us. Like I always say, you can follow the conversation on social media. Please use the hashtag of your mind when you send us a message. I'll see you next Sunday. <laughs>